she caught she caught mono something in a nutshell she was damn near paralyzed and she's in the hospital coma all kind of shit and this nigga R. Kelly sent her mama a thousand dollars. What's up everybody? Morning, 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 getting to it. Welcome to those of y'all who have never seen my show, but this is Glass, Bitty Daddy Vlog Life. I'm actually traveling right now, headed to the J. Yes, I have a full-time job in corporate America. Yes, I do vlog on the side. Yes, Crime World needs another ambassador sponsor. And yes, I am going to be talking about part one of Surviving R. Kelly. Bruh. Let's just get into what we need to get into. I know the initial part or I guess day one I guess maybe that's what, what I should say since I guess it's two parts of it but um let's just get into part two as far as the um the shit that we want to talk about we've all known that R. Kelly has been a predator like me personally I stopped just listening to all R. Kelly music years back. Cause man, my conscience, I, I just couldn't do it. My conscience was just fucking with me just too bad to let me just kind of ride with some shit that I knew that he was doing or shit that was going on. Like my conscience just wasn't, that, that shit just wasn't sitting right in my stomach for me. So I just couldn't, I couldn't, I could no longer do it. But we all know this nigga was a predator. We knew that. Hearing the story of these girls, the shit is sick. It's sad. So many, okay, so many parents. Let's be motherfucking clear about that. So many parents, older siblings, and everything failed these young girls. Why? They are allowing a nigga that is in his motherfucking 30s. No, fuck that. Why they are allowing a super adult that they don't know to supervise their children. And then all of these girls, well, let me not say all these girls. A lot of these girls didn't have any music um, ties, inclinations. I'm just not understanding like i know parents have kids young and so you know once their kids kind of get of an age they kind of want to be well you know i gotta live my life this or that but you have to protect your motherfucking child do you see how damaged these women was talking about that shit still to this day oh he meant all of these motherfucking women okay boom big caps right here all a l l all of these motherfucking girls as young teenagers y'all i'm 36 finna be 37 in a couple weeks shout out finna be 37 in a couple weeks okay i'm 36 i can see a teenage girl in the middle of the street with her leg bro right now screaming for help i might help her not because i'm some asshole or something like that because in my heart i want to help her but man, this look just how shit look like, dog. I I don't even see what type of attraction that he felt and he saw in these young girls. Like, even a girl that's 21 that's old enough to drink, she can't even do nothing for me. Like, boo, you ain't got an auntie. I mean, I I know I know you have a young auntie. Or an older auntie that still act like she young, that kind of wear cat suits on the side and shit. Shout out to you, and Jam Lil Zydeco. Like, look here, you. I know you got an auntie out there. Like, now nah, you, now, nah, like, now nah, you need to, no, no, nah, baby. Like, mm -mm, now nah, you, you still too, you still too young. Yes, I know you old enough to drink. Yes, I know you've been driving for five to six years. This and that. They said, now nah, you still a motherfucking baby in my eyes. Now, nah, like, what, what are we, what are we gonna talk about? Like. 
when you grew when you was growing up, Soulja Boy was way older than you. Like, what the fuck? Dude? No. So let me get back to the topic. Doubt so many parents fail these young girls. Like, seriously, it's a shame. It is a true shame. All of these girls, the one chick that she caught. She called mono something. In a nutshell, she was damn near paralyzed. And she was in the hospital, coma, all kind of shit. And this nigga, R. Kelly, sent her mama a thousand dollars. I'm not sure what nationality this girl is. I'm not sure how up to date her mother is as far as shit going on in adulthood and things like that. Like. It's, it's damn near impossible for me not to judge these motherfucking parents because the kids, the kids don't deserve this. And I gotta judge R. Kelly so harshly behind this shit because, because my nigga, like, you praying on these motherfuckers. You, like, for real, for real, praying on these kids. You gaining their trust. You using, you using all your powers and all your magic. I'm, let me not say magic. I don't make it like some voodoo shit. But my nigga, you using all your powers for evil. Everything you got that you're doing, you using all of that shit for evil. Like, all of that shit just for your own sexual benefits and shit like that. Like, and then when the nigga R. Kelly said on the Facebook Live video that they showed it at the beginning of the, the series... They were talking about that. The niggas like, yeah, it's too late now. They should have did this shit 30 years ago. Clear admission of guilt. Right there. Right there. Admission of guilt. No two ways about it. Oh, y'all want to know a second admission of guilt? Y'all know the interview that I'm talking about when old buddy asked him, do you like teenage girls? The niggas say, when you say teenage, how old are we talking? What? Nigga, I don't like grown girls, nigga. What the fuck? You think I'm gonna like a motherfucking teenage girl? Dog. Dog, I just, man, that, that shit is sick to my stomach. I have daughters, and that shit is motherfucking sickening to me. I am sick to my goddamn stomach looking at this shit. I'm so goddamn angry at all these goddamn mamas and daddies and older brothers and aunties and all this shit. Like, the motherfuckers that knew and that was still letting this shit ride, man, fuck all of you niggas, dog. Like, for real, for real. Like, this shit really is starting to get me hot now that I think about this shit. Like, you motherfuckers are not supervising these precious Jews, these girls, these daughters. They're gonna have kids. Now these damaged girls have the possibility of bringing all of that damagedness and well i know that's maybe not a word but all of, all of that shit like they have that shit of bringing that shit into their children dog okay now let's also talk Aaliyah's parents dog my bad Aaliyah's parents look here Aaliyah is dead and gone god rest her soul this fight that y'all are putting up to still make it seem like the shit that that what was going on with R. Kelly, he was never married to her. We could find that shit in motherfucking court documents, and that shit is notated in the U.S. government. All of this shit about what he wasn't doing and what y'all didn't know. This that look here, that Aaliyah is dead. Y'all fucked up as parents. That's let's just be totally honest. Y'all fucked up as parents. We know y'all fucked up as parents. Just say. We fucked up his parents. All of this shit that y'all are trying to do and y'all trying to mask and make it seem like y'all didn't know and y'all was doing the right thing. No, y'all did the wrong motherfucking thing. What y'all did was y'all allowed R. Kelly's fame and shit like that to impair y'all judgment based upon what y'all thought was best for y'all child. That's what it is. Aaliyah wanted to sing. She wanted to dance. She had talent. And y'all let some shit that y'all knew wasn't right go on to help push her along the path and get her to the point that she wants. Rather than being stand up and just say, fuck that. Look here, I got I have certain morals and shit that I stand on and it's not gonna happen. Y'all didn't do it. Y'all allowed this motherfucking predator. 
sorry, y'all allowed this motherfucking predator to do what he did. I mean, luckily the shit didn't get as bad as it got with all the other girls and you know they got a divorce after a little while. But y'all let this shit happen and the shit, I ain't gonna say it started there, but it did kind of start there. Nah, I didn't start there because when it started there, it started way back when the 14 year old girl was in the goddamn um, studio and R. Kelly was, was hitting one of the girls from, from the back inside the studio and you know he was letting him hear Honey Love and all kind of shit. Like my nigga, like you playing some girls that stealing motherfucking training bras, Honey Love. Nigga, that's marshmallow. That, that's not even love, dog. Like, this shit is really just still getting me motherfucking angry. His wife. Uh, I think it's Drea. I think it's Andrea. I don't know if it's Andrea, Drea, Kelly, the whole deal. I'm just, I'm still going to pray for you because it's, you know, like, even though you have changed and you have overcame some shit, I can still definitely tell that you're definitely damaged behind the whole shit and I'm not even mad at you for being damaged behind the whole deal I'm just still gonna pray for you when Sparkle came down and Sparkle we're gonna talk about that too when Sparkle came down, when Sparkle was in the in the, the room or in the living room they're watching the game and niggas said she heard knocking and she peeked her head I said hey, it's okay if I get something to eat look here dog that is gorilla pimping dog and Sparkle's like nah it won't be me it won't be me like he or Kelly had his shit beyond control but he had his shit beyond control because he didn't want none of the people talking to each other like he didn't want the different crews talking to each other so that everybody basically he used math he divided and he conquered for the most part which he could because he didn't want them motherfuckers to start mixing and start talking because if they start mixing and start talking two plus two equals four so he didn't want that math to add up he wanted that shit to separate so he could do this he could do that and then at the same time so he can also instill that fear in everybody to so that they wouldn't talk to people just so he could keep doing what he's doing he could keep his shit under wraps now this shit is so motherfucking sad man i'm just thinking about it and sparkle what you would what you were doing musically, how you were doing your thing. I'm I really have no opinion on that. What I do have an opinion on is you weren't blind to the shit as far as your young niece. But to a certain point, you still kind of let the shit go on. But oh but no, but, but Sparkle's niece's parents, oh no, I got to get in your ass because you were the one that allowed her to go to the studio without Sparkle being there. Like, y'all didn't call y'all motherfucking uh, cousin, niece, I'm sorry, maybe, whoever, whichever parent, you didn't call your sister? Hey, um, or Kelly wanted so-and-so to come by. Are you gonna be there? What's good, what's the deal with that? Like, y'all didn't do none of that shit. And during this time, niggas had pages, niggas had phones, this and that, like, your motherfucking daughter, and again, everybody and all of these people they want their kids to accomplish this fame so what they do they compromise their morals and they selling out in this motherfucker in order to get to the money and shit like that it's like well now it's good well now i'm gonna just let this go on and this and that you know we, when we get to the money we get better in this shit you know we'll fix this and that we'll fix this and that and not for the rest of your motherfucking life the child that you were supposed to protect was unprotected and they gonna deal with that shit for the rest of your life. So when you're in your 40s and 50s, and when your child has fucking grandkids, and at every motherfucking, well, not, let me not say every, but all these different holiday functions, when your child seems withdrawn, or your child might break out in tears, or this and that, all kind of different shit. Why? Because of the, the shit you didn't do? Yeah, now this is your motherfucking fault. Let's be clear. Again, R. Kelly is totally culpable for all this shit and his predatory behavior but so many goddamn parents and older people and everything just fail these kids like i text my mama today i love you good morning i tell my mama i tell my t i tell my t jones i love her all the time and shit like that but i'm so glad my t lady was so motherfucking nosy 
and this and that. Even my granny and aunts and everybody that raised me, like all of my, like all of those women with nosy and shit and just all in the nigga business and this and that. Because a lot of those times that shit saved my motherfucking life. Like they were able to figure out, okay, what niggas I was hanging with, what niggas I don't need to be hanging with, what scenery I was going to, what shit I, I don't need to be doing, this or that. Like that shit, I appreciate that shit so much more now because I see the difference and shit like that. Like I, I recognize the difference between homeboys that had parents that let them do all kind of shit and where, and where they fall short and how they got in trouble. And shit, some some niggas even died. Some chicks I knew even died too, just because they had you know parents that wasn't giving a damn and letting them do this or that. So, like man, I told my team, man, look, I I love you, and I know she probably re read that text like, oh, that's sweet, but they, at the same time, she might read that text like, damn, what the fuck was what's, what's going on with my son, mama? Nothing is going on with me. I'm perfectly fine. I just appreciate you always knowing what was going on, or, or always making it a point. To be all up in my goddamn business and making it clearly known that you wasn't my friend, that you was my parent at all. Like we was not partners. You wasn't gonna, you wasn't gonna try to make it seem like that or no shit like that. There was a clear guideline that we weren't friends, and I recognize that and I appreciate that and I love you, mama. And those parents that are still doing that, that go by that those old laws and just different things to where they just won't compromise who they are as a parent and who they are as an individual in order to get farther along in life based upon their child or based upon certain decisions i salute you for that because that's what it's supposed to be about job uh, i'm i'm just i'm really just thinking about all these different things and then when they say you know uh that sparkle niece is the one from the video you know the, the piss on video and shit like that like that that shit really turned my stomach and the girl was fucking 12 and then she was 14 and all kept pulling out futons and all kind of shit in gym floors he got a queen size bed in the middle of the studio he fucking these young girls on trailers like security what are you motherfuckers doing like you know this you know this girl is young you know she ain't got no parents you know this nigga ain't no type of kin to her and you know he ain't seeing her everybody is turning a blind motherfucking eye why because they don't want to fuck up their money man all you motherfuckers is weak all y'all is hoes in my eyes and i tell i tell your mama that too like dog oh this shit this shit hurt me to my goddamn soul man look here this this video might get no views and all fucking dislikes but oh fucking well i am a father of two daughters and you sick motherfuckers i will punch all you all you hoes in your goddamn head Oh, I, I know I know this video for the get flag. I know this shit for the get pulled off of YouTube. And I know I'm finna get so many dislikes and this and that and everything. No, fuck that, man. A lot a lot of y'all fucked up as parents. For real. Man, this shit. Oh, this shit sick. This shit just hurt me to my stomach. Dream Hampton, you did something courageous. I salute you. Bless you. <clears throat> Bless you. I will stay tuned. Keep doing whatever you're doing and bringing things like this to light because everybody that drew that blind eye and everybody that didn't want to get on the show and want to act like, well, you know, I don't want to speak on this and that John Legend. Hey, John Legend, salute to you, real nigga. And I, and I see you got you a solid haircut and the edge up his back right and shit like that. I see you out here, John, doing your goddamn thing. Dog. Surviving or Kelly, man. <clears throat> this shit is too crazy. Bitter daddy vlog life, man. Y'all get at me.